Okay. Well, a couple things. <clears throat> you know, Alabama is on central time, so when I came here, I lost an hour. And then last night, I lost an hour, so I'm going to take a nap. Y'all just do what you want for the next 30 minutes. Appreciate you staying and being interested in uh, looking at some things. Well, this is a class, and so we're going to do what we did yesterday. We're going to have some conversation, and I want you to feel free to, matter of fact, I'm going to ask you some things that I'm going to want your input and feedback about, okay? Um, I want to ask you this question. There you go. Whoops, let's go back. I want you to look at that question. If you had one opportunity to talk to a stranger for one hour uninterrupted, and you could talk about anything, what would you discuss and why? What would you talk about if you had one hour to talk to a stranger about any topic and it was uninterrupted. You had one hour. Okay, this is where this is where each of you tell me. So not not everybody, but who wants who wants to share some thoughts about that? I would talk to him about the big picture of the Bible presentation. Good, John. Good. You want to do that for the next few minutes? Good, I know you could. Yeah, okay. So is there anything about that big picture presentation that if, if you had an hour, you could do that in an hour, but is there anything about that that you might stress? Yeah, and I'm putting you on the spot, I know. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would stress Jesus. I would stress him as our Lord and Savior. Okay. And why that person, I don't <coughs> understand from that stranger what their religious beliefs were. Good, really good. Yeah. I think that's a good answer. Who else? John? I'd do it, but I'd do it in a way probably nobody else here would do it. I would, depending on the person I'm talking to that maybe is, doesn't believe in God at all, I would start with, this is me now, I would start with the date. You know, this is 2022. There's something significant about that date. And I'm talking to a person who doesn't believe in God at all. Yeah. So I'd ask them, why, where, where do they think that came from? How, how did we arrive at that? Interesting. And then I would go. Okay. I don't know if you can hear it. I'm getting the benefit of right here, so. You can repeat it. I, and I don't know if I can repeat it, but uh, it's worth repeating if I can remember everything about it. But John just said he'd, he'd, he'd approach it from a, today is the day, where did that come from? How do we know that? Is that, is that generally the idea? Yeah, 2022. What, 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 where is this date? Did you pick time? Yeah. Space and time? Pick that date. So, oh, we're going to start keeping track yeah. of time. Good. Yes, sir. I thought I'd talk about the joy of living. Okay. You must be a man who enjoys living. Every single day. Amen to that. Good. All right. Got a joy of living. I like that. What else? Anything else? What do you, if, if you, if you were trying to get this person, let me ask this, would we probably talk to them about something related to their spiritual well-being? Vicki, you said heaven, right? Yeah. yeah. That's sure what we'd want them to think about and go to, right? Uh, you want the person to act. You want the person to do something, right? What causes people to do something. They have to feel a what? They have to feel a need. If they don't feel a need, they're not going to do anything, right? And if they do, it's not going to be for the right reason. Would you agree with that? If, if somebody does something and it's not for the right reason, then what difference does it make? <clears throat> well, let me tell you. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, I would try. If I was going to a stranger, I was green how God changed my life. I tell, tell my testimony, what I go through, and uh, I bring God, and how beautiful he, he can change our life for good. Yeah. 
in, in the way I'm enjoying the peace now? Well, it's hard for me to argue that because I heard part of that yesterday. And I was like, yes. Yeah. And even before that, I think I would say, do you ever feel like there is something missing in your life? Yeah. That's a good question to ask. Do you feel like something's missing? That'd be a good, that'd be a good start. That'd kind of get the ball rolling, don't you think? Uh, there, there's, there's no wrong answer. You, you got, I just want to say, yeah. I mean, part of it should be, you know, when you, when you talk to them, that you got to open doors and let them know that, you know, God loves us all. And that we're all children of him. It doesn't matter who it is. That's right. That's right. good. You know, you know, everybody in here can, can answer this. Everybody in here I know is thinking, okay, here's what I think I'd do. Or if you don't, you, I'll give you enough time. You, you'd think something, okay? And, and because we, we would want to be prepared somehow for this, okay? Let me, I want, here, here's what I want to do. I want to share with you what I would do, okay? And, 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 and hopefully when it's over, I, I'm, I'm not suggesting that this is the right thing to do because I don't think there is a right thing. But th this has been, for me, an effective way to, to have a conversation, an initial conversation with people, if, if they think, if, if I can get them thinking about their life and, and, and what, what they are and what they need to be doing, if I can get them to think about that, this is what I talk to them about first, okay? That's all this is, and I want your, I want your input about it, okay? And I want you to see if, if this is something that resonates with you, okay? I, I would call this class who you are really, okay? That's kind of, that's kind of the, the, what I would talk about initially, who you are really. So here, here's what I would do. I, I ask people, if, 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 if they come to me or if I go to them and they say, hey, I, I'll be glad to study the Bible with, with you. This is what I try to get them to commit for five one-hour sessions, okay? Just five one-hour sessions and basically try to tell them the story of the Bible. Okay, now, it will, but this is the first lesson in that, okay? This is, this is how important, what we're going to talk about this morning, this is how important I personally think it is, okay? So I just want to share it with you and see what you think. As of this morning on Google, and they never lie, <laughs> there's generally speaking 7.9 billion people in the world. That's a lot of folks. 7.9 billion. There are 22 million, generally speaking, in, well, there's actually there's 330 million in the U.S., 22 million in Florida, and in the city of Orlando, this is as of last night, the best I could find, the city, not the metropolitan city, 330,000. Does that sound reasonable? Okay. Well, that's what I found. Okay. So we're going with those numbers. We're going with those numbers. That's a lot of people. Here's what I want to suggest to you. Most of those people have no idea who they are. Now, if I went to most of those people and I asked them, who are you, what are they going to say to me? They're going to give me their name, right? Right? Is that who, is that he, if I went to Ken this morning and I said, Ken, I'm Kenny. He said, I'm Ken Chapman. Is that who he is? You know it's a trick question, right? That's his name, right? But is that really, who he, could he change his name? Sure, he, he should have been a Kenny instead of a Ken. That'd be a lot better name. Are you a Kenneth? Yes. Okay, well then we're both, we're both good. We're good to go. Okay. <laughs> But if I come up to you, you tell me your name. We're proud of our name. Our name distinguishes us generally from an area. But I can promise you somewhere in this world there's another Ken Chapman. I can promise you that. There's probably another Kenny Moore, but I, I've never, I don't think I've met him. I've met some Moorers, okay, but I don't know that I've met anybody named Kenny, okay. But is that really who we are? That's what I want us to think about for a moment. And that's a problem because most people have no idea who they are, okay? And people who don't know who they are, what, what, how, what, what is that going to do? Why, why, is it, why is it essential that somebody knows who they are? Just answer that question for me. Why is that so critical? 
What? Okay, you can't really have a foot. If you don't know who you are, right? If you don't know who you are, how you're designed, I think there are some questions. This is where I start with people. Yeah. You don't know who you are. You are visible and you are visible around everybody that you engage with. And you're always looking for problems. You're always criticizing. You're in constant judgment. But the real angst of your issue is you. Yeah. And, and it's, a, an, it's an uncertainty about who I am. We, 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 all, we all have, I don't care who you are, you, you meditate on these kind of things. Don't you think that's true? Don't you think everybody's trying to figure out what their life is about and who they are and how they ought to operate and what they ought to do? Everybody's trying to figure that out, okay? And, and we all have these questions. I call them the big questions. So I want you to assume that you're there in that picture. That'd be kind of a nice place to be right now. You're on an island, and you're by yourself, and you cannot, you, you, you don't know anything. Now, you have the ability to think, and you have the ability to reason, but you don't know anything, okay? So tell me one question you'd ask yourself. How did I get here? Okay, how did I get here? What? What am I doing here? How do I get out of here? Is anybody else here? How do I get here? How do I get out? How do I get out of here? Where can I find food? There you go. That's my man right there. Where can I find food? All right? And on all of, of all those important questions? Sure. But I want you to think really fundamental, very even more fundamental than some of that. Now we've asked a couple of those already. You know nothing. Let me mention three. Who am I? That have to do with identity. I'm going to suggest that most people, to, in that, out of that 9 billion people, they don't know who they are. They're asking the question, but they don't know who they are. Who put me here? That has to do not with identity, but what? Origin. That's origin. How did I get here? Who or how did I get here? Okay? And then comes what I think is the, the final question in this, in this series of se sequence. Why am I here? What's my purpose? Now, I want to ask you a question. Do you believe that if everybody had the biblical answers to those questions, that the lives of people out of that nine billion would be a lot better than they are? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me tell you right now, if you and I understand the correct, the, the right answers to these questions, our life will be what it ought to be. If we don't understand the right answer to these questions, our life will be miserable. It won't be as full as it needs to be, as God intended it to be. So I think this is the point. And everybody asks these questions. Everybody does. Years ago, <clears throat> I was in uh, Folsom, California. I was traveling through there. I was staying with some folks and, and, at night. Their, their daughter was off at college. She was, I don't know, in, she, was, she was at, at one of the colleges in California. And uh, so I was staying in her room and before I went to bed, I was just noticing some books on her shelf, and she had this book it's called The Big Questions by, by Robert Solomon. It is a philosophy book. And when I saw The Big Questions, I just pulled it off and started thinking about that and, and, and started reading a little bit. And it was a textbook for the, at that time, it would have been about 1983, it was a textbook for the California Community College System. It was a philosophy book. And I pulled it off the shelf and I began to peruse through it. And basically what it was doing, it was trying to answer the questions that we just put on. It's, it's who am I? Why am I here? And who put me here? Now, I'm going to just ask you a question. Can you imagine in a California community college system, can you imagine the kind of textbook that they're going to be using to answer those three questions? Now, to their credit, <clears throat> they gave some attention to... <clears throat> God, morality, purpose, they gave some, and I, and I perused it, I mean, the, the, they, they gave some ideas about that kind of thing, but it's just an option. You basically, you believe what you want to do, what, you know, what we're here, that's what, this is what public, you know, public institution, we're, we're here just to tell you, we're just here to throw out some options where you, you think what you want to think, right? And that's basically what this book was doing. 
And as I thought about that, I thought about, well, you know, these, these are the questions that, that, that really that everybody asks. And everybody's got to find, I think, find the answer to that. Now, let, let's, let's think for just a minute. How does the Bible answer those three questions? If I'm sitting here talking to somebody, I've established this. I want, I want to ask you, and I would ask them, who are you? And they'd give me their name. Okay? I would say, who put you here? And most of the time, if, if, they're, if they're wanting to study the Bible with me, what do you think their answer was? God. They're good with God. You know, they may not... It's, it is a hard concept. They may not fully comprehend it. I don't either. They may not fully accept it, but their answer to who put me here is God. And their answer to their purpose was somewhat, I'm not sure, <laughs> okay? To which I'm thinking, I'm going to help them. I'm going to help them. So, we'd turn, so where, where do you think you would turn to to help somebody understand the answer to those three questions? Who am I? Who put me here? And why am I here? Where do you think you'd turn? There you go, John. Genesis 1. I'd start in the, in the very beginning, right? In the very beginning, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And, 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 and that doesn't, that, the, the Bible assumes God, okay? But I want you to think about some things with me when, when we're thinking about trying to help somebody understand who they are. And, and, and the reason that I want to just share this with you this morning is this is so important for us. I think it helps solidify in our minds exactly who we are. And I think if we're, if we're fully, if, if we fully understand this is who I am, and this ought to then, my life ought to be what I'm talking about here. If I'm con fully convinced about this, then it changes my life. Let's talk about this. When God created mankind, Genesis 1, then God said, let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, who created them. So what's the answer to who are you now? Based upon those verses, what's the answer? I'm God's creation. I am a man or woman created how? In the image of God. May I ask you a question? If everybody in the world knew that they're a man or a woman created in the image of God, would that solve a lot of problems in our world? Just that? Just, just, just this? Okay, that solves a lot of problems, right? Made in the image of God. I mean, it's my judgment that if people... You know, if, if, if I'm talking to somebody, I think if, they, I think if you get Genesis 1, 2, and 3, then the rest of it's pretty easy. If you get the fact that you're made in God's image and he expects you to live as a person who's made in his image, that you're going to be accountable and you understand the nature of sin and why that's bad and you understand that he sent a Savior, then I think you're good to go. And you find all that in Genesis 1 through 3, right? I spent a lot of time early on because that, to me, that's, the, that's fundamental. You have to get that. Here's my question. What's an image we're made in God's image. What does that mean? Likeness? Yeah, likeness. You cheated because it's likeness is up there, right? <laughs> That's exactly what I'd say too. And images and likeness, right? Is the image the original? No. And how many of you have seen my dad? All right, John, you don't answer. Let me, let me Vicki, I'm going to ask you this question because and Ralph's sitting by you. Do you think my dad's handsome? <laughs> See, it's a trick. That's a loaded uh, it's a loaded question. That's right. I don't want you to answer. I don't want you to answer. <laughs> I'm sure, Vicki said, I'm sure he is. Thank you, Vicki. <laughs> She's already said she thinks my dad's probably handsome. I look like my dad. So therefore, I am what? Uh, okay, you see my point. Am I my dad? No. Do you think my dad's tall? Yeah, he's pretty tall. Uh, I'm not to get too personal, but th th there's, I don't, there's a place on my leg I don't have hair. I don't, I don't, this is personal. Guess, guess what? My dad doesn't either. It's, it's genetic. It's kind of odd. But am I my dad? No. But I look like my dad. I act like my dad, but I'm not my dad. Are we God? F far be it. 
We don't come close. But are we like him? How are we like him? That's my question. How are we like him? Let me mention three things. Yeah, well, Rufus, give me one. We have the ability to create. Okay, we can create. Because uh, we're kind of short on time, I, I just want to, I just want to kind of go through mine. We, we have a spiritual side, right? God is a spirit. You have a spiritual side? Any other part of creation have a spiritual side besides us? Nope. Nope. We're moral beings. Do we have a sense of right and wrong? Yeah. We call it ought. It's a sense of ought. We have a sense about that. Why? Because we're, we're made in the image of God. We can reason and we can think, right? Can any other parts of creation reason and think besides human beings? No. But we can think, okay? And what I would suggest really about all of this is that, that, that there are multiple things about us being made in God's image, but, but everybody who is a human being has all of these. And you don't have a choice in it. When you were born, you're made in God's image. No, nobody went to your mother after you were born and said, listen, you got 60 seconds, image or not image. You want it or you don't want it. 60 seconds, 59, 58, 57. She's sitting there going, what do I do? You're made in God's image whether you want it or not. You're made in God's image whether you like it or not. And because of the fact that you're made in God's image, you are a spiritual being. You have a spiritual side. Sometimes in the Bible that's talked about as a soul. And we're not going to get into the, the nuance of soul and spirit and all that right now. But there is a side of you that you have because you're a human being. You have a moral sense. And you can reason and you can think. And that's, that's what I want to try to help people understand. Listen, God has made you and he's given you the ability to think for yourself. So reason and think and use your mind that God's given you to think about who you are and why you are and what you need to be be doing. So I want us to think about it from a text in Psalms. This is Psalm 8. I love this text. I preached a lesson about this Psalm last week, I think, where I, I think it was last Sunday, where I was, where I, where I preach regularly. Just because I love the Psalm so much. I want to read it. This is the Psalm of David. You probably guessed that, right? If, if somebody says, who wrote that psalm? Just say David. You may not be right, but you've got a pretty good chance. <laughs> David said, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you're mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? You made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds are there and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. I know I read that fast. David said, when I think about who I am, what is man that you're mindful of him? The son of man that you visit him. I think he's probably talking about the same thing. He talked about, but have you ever asked, you ever asked yourself this question? Of these 9.1 billion people, God, why do you care about me? You ever ask yourself that question? Who am I? I'm going to tell you what, if, if, if you understand your value, you understand why God thinks about you. And David said, I think about this. Matter of fact, he uses the word, the word consider. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, that's the idea of creation. Work of fingers has to do with God making things, creating things. He said, when I think about that, here's my question, God, why do you care about me? So he's saying, I look at all the things that you made, and now my question is, why is it that you care about who I am? David asked that question. I can see him out on a Judean hillside saying this, can't you? What, what, what would he be doing out on a Judean hillside? Tending sheep. He didn't have a smartphone. He didn't have any kind of phone that I know of. What do you think he was doing out there in the middle of the night watching sheep? Meditating. He was sure he was looking up in the heavens going, there's the moon, there's the star. God, why do you care about me? I, I can see him doing that. We need to be doing more of that. In my judgment, we need to be doing more of that kind of thing. Meditating on who God is and why I'm important to him. But let me very quickly tell you how I think David, when he, when he talks about in this context, he's talking about what he sees. He sees stars. He talks about the moon and the stars. 
What can a star do? Shine or, or what? Or burn out. Pretty much burn or burn out, right? That's pretty much just... Who determines what a star does? God. By what means? His power. And, and He created it, so it's, it, we call, call that nature. Okay? Does the star ever get any credit or discredit because he's, that star burns or burns up? No. Just a star. Right? How about this? What's that? A rose. Now, he doesn't mention flowers, but, but I think he alludes to it in the creation. Tell me something a rose can do. What can a rose do? Bloom? Look pretty? Smell? Give off fragrance? Die, bloom and die, right? It's either, it's either growing or it's dying, right? Does any of the credit ever go to the flower? Okay, a lot of people think so. But has the flower, does the flower receive any credit or discredit because something the flower's done? No. You, you plant the flower. You water the flower. You fertilize the flower. God provides the sun. God provides the nutrients. You may help in that process. But the credit or the discredit for the pretty flower goes to the person who made it, who created it, okay? And a lot of that happens by nature. But the credit or the discredit never goes to the flower, right? That's part of creation. But that's not me. How about this? What's that? That's a dog. That's a, that's a wolf wolf, yeah. Oh, now let's talk about this. What can a dog do? Here we go. Now, we, now we're going to... What did you say, Vic? Love you. Love you? Sure. Lick you? Can be trained? It can eat? What? Is a companion? Physically, what can they do? Run, jump, bark, bite. bite. There you go. Hey, let me ask you a question. Can boy dogs and girl dogs make puppy dogs? Baby dogs? Puppy dogs? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. When they do that, do they date? Do they date for a while? Do they say, does, a, does a boy dog turn about oh, 15, 16 years old and go, you know what? I live right across the street from, from her, but I've never thought about her till now. And somehow I'm getting older and there's just something about her that looks different than me. She acts differently. She looks differently. And I think I'm in love. I think I like to spend some time with her. Does that ever happen to a dog? No. What happens to a dog that reaches the point where there's urges? The dog takes what the dog wants. Am I right about that? Just, they, just, they just act on instinct, right? It, they, they never reason. They never listen to their parents and say, you know what, it's about time you, you, you started your own family. There's none of that that goes on. When dogs get to the point where they do what they do, they do it because that's what they do. Now I want to ask you a question. Do you know any people who act like that? A lot of people act like that. Let me ask you a more pointed question. Do you know any Christians who act like that? Let's all do it. Let's all, let's all, because we can't read everybody's mind, but there's plenty of evidence that would say that there's some people that don't give much thought to how they live their life, right? When that girl dog comes home back to her house and, and, and her master looks at that dog and says, you gained weight. I'm going to start, we're going to hold back some food. I'm not going to give you as much food. And a month or two goes by, they, he hadn't hardly fed her, and, and she's bigger than she was two months ago. And he finally says, you're going to have, you're going to have a puppy. Does, does, does the master sit her down and start explaining to her why that shouldn't be happening? Does he have a conversation with her and say, what's wrong with you? No. Why? Because dogs do what dogs do. 
When human beings do what dogs do, what does God call that? Sin. Sin. Why? Because we're not supposed to act like a dog. Because how are we made? In God's image. We're made in God's image. We're not only made in His image, but that, that, that should cause us to respond so that we use our minds to understand how we're to live in this life. Now, may I ask you a question? I know I can because I'm getting ready to. Just based on that, do you, think, do you think if people understood just what we've talked about for the last 20 minutes, that their lives would be different? Sure. I'm just trying to get them to see, listen, you're a person who's made in God's image, and you have a relationship with God. Who has that kind of relationship with God? Everybody. Why? Because you're made in His image. Every single person is made in God. You have that relationship. What happens in every relationship? If you have a relationship, what automatically comes with relationship? It's another R word that has long. There you go. Responsibility. You have a relationship. What comes with that? Responsibility. You know people who, they want to be a father? But what's the problem with some of those people who want to be a father? They don't want the responsibility. What does God call that? Sin. Sin. You want to have a relationship? Any relationship. I don't care what it is. But I think there's, there's a moral aspect of all that if, if it's something that God approves of. But, but, but all of us, all of us have a relationship with God in that we're made in His image. So all of us have a responsibility to Him because we're made in His image. We don't have a choice in that. Because in the end, we're all going to be held, what's that word? There you go. When I'm talking to somebody, first time, you know who you are? You have a relationship with God. You're made in His image. You're not like all the other parts of creation. They're not held, they're not held responsible. God's not going to send stars and flowers and dogs to hell. They're not responsible. God's not going to save stars and flowers and dogs. They're not responsible. They don't have a soul. But we do. And he, because we have this relationship, He's going to hold us responsible. He's going to tell us, you have the ability to respond. Every single person does. And so here's the choice. You're going to respond or you're not going to respond. Because in the final analysis, who's going to stand before God in judgment? Every single person. Every single person. And I look at them and I say, now, that's why. All this is why what we're about to talk about is so important. Because because you're, you're going to have to give an account. I'm going to have to give an account. So let's go back and answer now those questions. And so we're going to go back and talk about those things. Okay? That's quick. But that's what I wanted to do. If, if, that, if that's of some value to you, I hope that, that you can use that. But uh, I appreciate your kind attention. Y'all have been so good to us. It's, this is... This is I hate to leave. I, I, would, I was hoping that it would still be ice and snow back in Alabama because I was going to call the elders and said, the meeting's been extended for a month. I'm going to stay down here for a while. But I can't do it. I love all of you. I really appreciate you listening so well. Thank you very much.